Welcome to the FlexDev meeting, December 12th. Let's get started. Cool. So some updates. Last night, uh, Kubernetes 1.32 was released. <clears throat> and yeah, we got lucky this time. No uh, breaking changes in any APIs. No incompatibility with cosine helm, customize all the million dependencies that we have. So yeah, I've uh, finalized the upgrade of all libraries, controllers, CLIs, and I've opened like a ton of pull requests and what else will uh, go on them and stem them. It's not uh, nothing out of place. I also discovered that there is uh, an issue with how we build a uh, source controller and we have to upgrade the Go version, the Alpine version and the uh, XX version. I figure out the right versions to this and yeah, we we can now rebuild controllers again. Other stuff uh, from me, I plan to add yet again a new command. So I've, I've implemented the flux debug hand release command this week. Hopefully by Friday evening, I'll do the same for flux debug customization, which like the Hand release uh, command will allow people to see the customized uh, variables that are coming from various sources and how these get overwritten. Um, there's a lot of confusion around. You have some variables defined inline in the flux customization, then some variables come from config maps, some from secrets, and they overlap in the key name, right? How they get merged, which is the final thing that you are actually going to apply in the cluster. Um, yeah, there's a lot of confusion on Slack. Our docs are not also clear. So um, yeah, decided to implement this command so people don't have to guess. You can run it and see for yourself was the final thing that you are applying. I also seen a comment from Sunny on the flux debug and release that show status should be the default. I'm not convinced about that. I think debug default should be very different. Should be more about the composition of everything that can uh, impact the hem release or a customization across the cluster and have it in a nice CLI UI. I haven't figured out yet how to present that, but should be a combination. For example, for debug hem release, the default command, the, the default of the command should figure out, okay, this hem release comes from a Helm chart, which is produced by a Helm repository of type HTTP. So it should gather the status of the Helm repo. If that's okay, then you should look at the chart. See maybe that's where it's failing. And finally to the Helm release and present that, that in a nice much way. Much better. I think we have not discussed this. I was very surprised by the speed of all these things. This sounds much better, but we didn't get any time to discuss this. Yeah, we, we discussed the show values and uh, that's that's one of the major drivers of, of starting this command. Um, but yeah, debug should, should be more than just showing the merged values. Uh, should actually collect somehow all the things and, and show it in a nice view. Um, we somehow have parts of this. I think if you run flux trace and release, it shows you 
okay, this end release has this source, but you don't see the status there. So it's a uh, trace will not help you much. It will just tell you, oh, you need to look at all these objects. Then you need to do a helm, uh, flux get of every object. And yeah, it's, it's a bunch of commands that you have to build together. Um, Things like debug and trace are related. You would use trace to when you are trying to debug. Trace can be moved under debug. Yeah, but trace is more about figuring out uh, <clears throat> the the commit or the it's a trace back to the source. That's this that was my intention when I when I implemented the command. Now it can be used for debugging, that's true, but it doesn't give you uh, all the things that you would actually need to debug a failure, right? So I, I'm not for removing trace as it is, I'm for having some of that information in the debug output, but the debug output should, I think, should focus on detecting errors and highlight those errors, no matter where they are to the user. Uh, and also, my concern is like you have flux events, right? Which should also help a lot with debug. But as we know, events are very ephemeral. If you are not there when it happened and you go on the cluster the next day, maybe it failed in the weekend, you go on Monday. If you don't have persistence, events are gone, right? So I think the debug command should uh, focus on what's persisted and that's the statuses of all the objects and compose a nice view out of the status of the various object that, uh, objects that make up the final uh, reconciler. I don't know, git status object plus customization object, that should be the output of plug debug customization, right? Um, and of course, we'll all also show where you need to go to fix all these things, right? So it should contain the URL of the source, the digest, the commit, the branch, all those information that will help you, you know, go back to the origin and, and fix the, the thing that failed. Uh, yeah, so we... I'm, I'm not sure what the output is, what the final output would be. Maybe we can have a dedicated meeting next year for the two debug commands. Right now I want to have it for the customization with this limited scope of uh, helping people figuring out with, what are the final variables and their values. And later on we can think about the the full UI of, of debug. So that that's the reason <laughs> why it has this weirdness where you need to pass a flag because yeah the, the main command is not uh, not yet decided. I just noticed that kubectl also has a debug command. Yes, which accepts yeah, and and debug the debug command for kubectl is around uh, debugging a pod where you can basically it attaches uh, an ephemeral container there, so you can shellexec do 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 other things. But for flux, you don't need to shellexec into anything. You just need to you know make all the information available to the user in a single with a single command. So it's has the same name, but with the same goal, but the way we implement it is quite, it's way simpler for us. We don't need to spin up containers inside pods and all of that. Um, it's more of inspection, what we are doing. Could be inspected. Yeah. <laughs> is, in, mm, I don't know if it's inspected. Uh, query. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now let let's 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 stick with debug because in the end this is uh, I think this is the end goal. Like, why would you run this command? Is because you are debugging stuff. Otherwise, get or trace it is more than enough. Uh, 
It would, I would really like it if we wait and there is such a proposal, we wait for one meeting where we can discuss it before implementing it or before merging it, you can implement it. Just have clarification on the design. In this case, we just discussed the idea. We never discussed about how it could be implemented under what command and the behavior and everything got merged in two days. Yeah. And now I'm going through everything and it feels like, should I comment or not comment? I see issues. Comment. I mean, should I comment? It's a it it's a experimental uh, thing, right? He's not. Uh, he's just a helper. But there there is overhead. I commented uh, around the package API chain. Now, if, I, if you change it, you have to do really with so many packages. Do dependency updates. He updates. told me the same stuff with with the Helm prefix, and I disagree. I think in in the Flux API context, values is the thing around help. So the and the comment on the on the field, I think it's enough. I don't I don't think we should rename it because we don't have values in the APIs anywhere else. Right. So I was even uh, thinking of moving the chart utils inside the help sub parent package because there is a customized package. It's just chart utils. It could be Helm and then chart utils. Yeah, maybe we can do that when we extract all all the all the things from the Helm controller. So getting the chart utils was the let's say the easy thing, but we need to extract all the actions because we need Flux build Henrys, and I. So I've tried to do that. And after a couple of hours, I realized, okay, this is something that will take a very long time because it's quite complicated uh, how it's all mixed into the controller with a context that comes from the reconciler and it's, mm -hmm. the loggers are attached. Uh, so yeah, I mean, he did a great work. Now we have these packages. It's It's great that we, we have this separated, but it's still not that simple to just copy paste and rename and put in package. Uh, Charutil is more, let's say, isolated, and uh, it, I, I just moved it as it is. But I think in the end, we'll have a package helm of our own. Chart will be a sub package of it. We we'll need actions. We need we we need all the all the things around uh, the server side dry run, which is a mix of imports SSA. So we also have this. If we move it to package, we'll we'll have some issues with with references, um, uh, cyclic references and stuff like that. So yeah, it needs more. <laughs> uh more thinking about maybe i i'm guessing in the end we'll, we'll end up with this help package but it will probably look a little bit different from what we have in help control right now so yeah i uh, i just wanted to have the values done for for people to play with it in the debug command but the end goal is to have Flux build hand release, right? That's that's the most requested feature in Flux so far. So that's that's the end goal for next year. What are you working on, Sunny, right now? Nothing, just revealing so much to review. There is the GitHub app thing. Oh yeah, so I, I merged that package, but it's kind of blocked. We can't merge anything else. Uh, if Even if source controller is ready. I mean, no, source controller, we can merge it. So let's, I'll, I'll, I'll try to review that one more time. I think TT solved the status stuff that we talked last time. But and then all the, all the others, we can't merge them because we need the source controller release. So that's, that's for next year for sure.
Yeah, another another thing we we should discuss is what to do. So we need to do a flux release, minor release. There is a new Kubernetes version. So in January, we need to do it and not wait a very long time. Wait, January minor release? Will this be the next release or some other release? So we need to do Flux 2.5 that comes with Kubernetes 1.32, right? We decided that we are, every time we, we bump we we bump Kubernetes, we run the end-to-end -end test, and then because we now depend on a new miner of Kubernetes, that means we need to do a flux miner, right? Even if we don't see breaking changes, who knows? <laughs> right? So uh, it's it's too much uh, too much of too big of a dependency to, to do it in a patch release. So we'll we'll have to do um uh, flux 2.5. For 2.5, I want to, so for myself, I want to focus on the custom health checks for customized controller to solve the, what we talked in the previous meeting to solve the cluster API health checks, their manager and so on. But in the roadmap, we also have for 2.5 image automation GA. And image automation GA is not just bumping the versions, it's the digest. I don't know why why is it in that month we didn't discuss. We discussed it. We discussed no, we it at the beginning we'll, of the year. We didn't say we <laughs> released this version, we just moved it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Unless you say I, you can do it and you have enough time to do it, which I doubt it because there are other pull requests. Maybe we should move it to 2.6. Reviews is what's taking all my time. I'm not doing anything, just review. And if I don't do it, it will not move forward. I have to review. <laughs> so yeah. if you, if somebody else implements, but, but this is something that I can implement easily. Because I did the refactoring, it would be easier. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. On, on one hand, the digest, I don't know, uh, Mateus could take it, right? But you will definitely do it way faster because you refactor both controllers. And also, if we do GA, we should really remove uh, all that double templating stuff in image automation, mm -hmm. right? That you did. Like you, Preserve the old style of templating. You added the new style, and there is a lot of complexity in the code to to make use for both of them. And we should also get get rid of that, right? Uh, and you know what to remove, and I I don't know. It's like it's a lot of code in there, so also that uh, I I prefer if you could do it. But on the other hand, I don't want to stress you because we also need. The git stuff, which is ninety nine percent there, right? So I would say let's make two point five about GitHub app uh, authentication, custom health checks, and that's it. And set set the deadline for two point five in I don't know first of February, let's say. Um, um and I yeah. I'm also working on a few bugs. So there's the Helm subchart CRD one that I would also like to discuss today here. I just found a bug that I think it's a bug in Helm, either in the Helm docs or in the code, one of the two. So there's this. There's also another bug that you um the CLI me. one. Uh yeah, yeah, I think it was the diff one, right? Uh artifact. Diff customization, yeah, flux diff customization doesn't seem to ignore files correctly. Yeah, there that one. Um uh I believe until so the release 2.5 is in January or February? February, right? Yeah. Yeah, I believe until yeah. February I can uh ship those two. And also there's something that 
uh, a few people are asking a lot for, which is the RFC for custom metadata in, in, in alerts. So at mm. least I would like to, you know, I promised them that I would do it a, a few weeks ago and I wasn't able to touch that. And, uh, and now again, I have a promise for this week. So maybe today or tomorrow, I will do something in that pull request, but it's really just about addressing comments and getting at least the RFC merged, possibly implemented for the release. I don't think it's a lot of work. It's just really uh, changing the code from the package repo and bumping the controllers. Uh, and there's another bug that I would like to work on. That one, I don't know if it will fit the release, uh, but I want to work on making the um, the Git repository objects that have includes, right, with other Git repository objects, they are not triggering the, like the, the included is not triggering the, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. that includes. And I suppose that one is going to be a bit more complicated, like it's not going to be a simple bug fix, but I do want to work on it. And what do you think? Yeah, definitely the the include one is a pain point. I I'm for for shipping that if we can two point five, if not two point six. Another thing, uh, another is not a bug. It's getting you know, a uh, a bug and a feature request. <laughs> uh, so, um, people are using Mix a lot, right? Even on Mac OS and Linux Mac. Mix OS, whatever. Nix. 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 And the, the problem is that Nix uh, creates sim links for, for things a lot. And when you do flux push artifact of uh, some packages that locally that contains components, YAML files, flux object, and so on, what we do is, so I've reused the code from source controller where we basically ignore symlinks. But for the CLI, that's not okay. We should resolve the symlinks, create a temdir, copy the content of all the symlinks in the temdir, and when we push the artifact, it should contain all the actual files. And there is there is an issue in the in the CLI for that uh, because. These people are currently blocked. What they do now, they basically manually copy all the files from all the sim links into a different directory and they run flux push command. I think it should be fairly easy to us when we uh, uh, traverse the the directory that flux push command is is uh, pointed at, resolve the sim links, create a temp directory, remove all the content there, package that content and push it and then delete the temp deal. Um, it's, it's not, I, I I clearly see it's very easy to do it because we have like all the all this code in, in package and instead of dealing with the same link, we just ignore it, which is fine for, for source control. But here we should actually follow the same link and, and copy the content. Uh, is is not a big thing to implement, but it will enable you know people that are are using Nix and Nix become more and more popular. Uh, it will be a nice feature to have, nice feature, nice addition to the to the command to to implement this thing. Uh, and it's not a bug, right? It's just a change in behavior. So my my proposal there was for the flux push command to have a, a optional argument, resolve sim links or something like that. And when you pass it, instead of skipping those, you'll just follow them, copy the files and create a directory. Another use case for this is when you, so I've seen people that in customized overlays, they have sim links, uh, so they don't have to copy base files. I've seen a lot of setups like that. And yet again, it doesn't work. It doesn't work with source controller. And the solution was, oh, you run flux push 
with resolved scene links, right? Then you'll have the whole, all the things in place, and then you could use plugs, right? So it's not only about the people that are using Mix, also people that are using uh, uh, Git sub modules nice. and, and sim links in their repos. Because right mm, now so... people have, have this script, which is a hack that, you know, creates a different branch with all the things resolved. And yeah, it, it complicates a lot the workflow. So that's something we'd like to put on the release as well? In the roadmap. You say you're right. Not Flux 2.5? Just the roadmap? Uh, uh, yeah, but do we have time to do all of that? That's... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask, like, I, I listed, like, three bugs and one RFC here. So I wanted to know what you guys prefer. I could work on that. I could also, I don't know. So this is the... the what about the federated login? You see thing? <laughs> huh. I can review, yeah. like, you can do one of... You're the one who really wants to work on it, right? <laughs> You were the one. I was just giving ideas. You told you would implement it. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it, but it, it won't be soon. Oh, regarding the sibling thing, I remember we had a discussion about resolving siblings in the Antar, related to Antar packets. And uh, I think people from VMware were looking for something. What are they looking for? Well, I think there, there was, we used to have error when there were siblings. And then we added a ignore sibling flag or something, an option in Antar packets. At that time, I was thinking we can implement full resolution, but I think that would require a lot of parsing the file system and creating or copying all the files. This flux push command, will it depend on this Antar? No, right? It can directly do it on its own. But are you thinking of adding this in Anta so that even source controller can resolve symbols? No, 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 because so we we discussed this early on why we don't want to deal with symlinks and was basically because it allows uh, file system transversals, right? If you if you look at, I don't know, uh, CVs in Helm and Argo, you'll see like most of them are about, oh, damn, I'm following this thing and it tricked me and now I'm in, the, in another directory and all of a sudden, one tenant can include uh, files from another tenant's artifact just because you managed to uh, confuse the code through Simlinx. And it, it opens basically a Pandora box on the on the server side. So I'm really against about dealing with Simlinx on the server side, but I think on the client side is the right way to do it. There, it's where you resolve them. Right, so it's you. You run this in CI, whatever, and whatever you push for the cluster, it has no symlinks. It's the final thing, so you can inspect them before, make sure that okay, the resulting artifact has all the things. You can run scanners on them to make sure I don't know uh, unwanted content uh, is been there. And doing on the client side, it it doesn't expose flux the controllers to uh tricking it into going into other directories the, the the biggest problem is that no matter how much you are trying to deal with multi-tenancy the idea is that you have uh, a, a service account token mounted in your pod and it's available at the path slash var slash secrets slash kubernetes something token right so if a sim link tricks the controller, there is a huge possibility 
because this path to the token is fixed that you know you can let's say generate a customized secret in your tenant namespace that will contain the token of the controller and this is the perfect escape to escalate from whatever your uh, service account can do to let's say what source controller service account can do and that service account can read all the secrets you know in the cluster so that's a 10 out of 10 cv right so that's why i'm i'm really trying to not deal with symlinks at all on the server side and people were happy with it i mean uh, uh, we we had that request from from VMware, but they were not using our reconcilers. They were they are using source control as a something in their CI where they need you know to build source code and stuff like, like that. Where you probably need some links and and other stuff. But yeah, but you still have yeah, the I same think... concern on the client side. <laughs> May not be so severe. But still there. Somebody can copy a two config. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. We need to put a warning on that flag. Of course, is uh, is what it is. But uh, it's the user that runs it. Is the it has control of the computer? Probably it shouldn't have the cluster and minikube config there. Okay. Whatever. You can have a like like you said explicitly have a flag saying results in the fine. Yes, yes, yes. And must be opt-in, right? Do not do it by default. Um, so to conclude around the, the roadmap, because I really want I want to set the roadmap for for Q1 this year. For Q1 next year. Uh so moving again, image automation GA and the digest to the next milestone, 2.5, no, 2.6. Okay. And in 2.5, okay. we are going to keep GitHub app authentication, the cell custom health checks, and they haven't heard various, from yeah. Kevin, about the cell. The, Yes, yes, and the uh, uh, the cell parts are for for the receiver, and yeah, bugs we don't have to list them in the in the roadmap. How about the RFC for custom metadata for errors? Yeah, like you said, I don't think it's much of a effort to implement it. Because so basically you look up some key values, you attach them to the event, and then on the other side, you extract them and you add them to the event metadata, which is already handled everywhere in notification controller. So it's... Oh, yeah. Uh, so besides making the change on the library and bumping the controllers, we also have to... In notification change... controller. Yeah, notification controller has to accept those those values. Yeah, right now yeah, it yeah. wouldn't. So yeah. Yeah. We have, yeah, we have that allow list, right? So you would add the the key prefix that we've Yeah, the used. prefix of the group, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so I, I think it's doable. I think it's doable. Um let's let's try to get the RFC in shape so we can merge them. Merge it, mm -hmm. and then I can also help next year with the implementation reviews, everything. Yeah, I I think it's is doable, and will please a lot of people because yeah, <laughs> this is also something that a lot of people wanted, uh, especially for the image automation uh, use case where I wanted it want... myself when I was on the user side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's valuable. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not doubting that. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll I also add this RFC to the roadmap and try to set a deadline for the first week of, of February. 
And if True. we can make it first week, you can move it to the second week. It's not uh, nothing. No one will chase us with a gun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. Mateus, tell us about the helm bug. Who? Um, let me share my screen real quick here. Um, so, uh, so <clears throat> the bug is that. Um, the CRD of a subchart of a dependency is applied even if the condition field of a dependency uh, evaluates to false. So this the is fix. Helm or our best Helm controller? Sorry? This is behavior of Helm or Helm controller? Uh, it's a behavior from Helm that the Helm controller should uh, act the same way. So it's a fix in Helm controller. So this is indeed a bug in Helm controller that I'm trying to fix. So in the fixes, um, let me show the PR here real quick. Um, fix is super simple. Uh, in upgrade and install, we just pass the values to apply CRDs, right? Because Helm controller applies CRDs separately on purpose, right? It's a design decision. And like, yeah, we just pass the values, like so I'm altering the signature of this function here, apply CRDs to receive the values. We pass the values in, in both places here. And uh, in the function, we use the values to call this library from Helm here. Uh, process dependencies with merge, uh, passing the chart, like the main chart and the values. Um, this Why is this the fix? Because that's exactly what um, the actual code does. Like for example, like the Helm code. So there's this in the install here, after applying the CRDs, the next thing we call is this install dot run with context. So this, this run with context uh, is also code from Helm. And if you look into this code, you'll see that it, it's exactly what it does. It's called to call this function here because this function will, you know, check your uh, configuration of the dependencies to evaluate if it, the dependencies is enabled or not, and um, and either remove or or keep the dependency in the chart object in memory. So the uh, issue, the original issue here, shows uh, in a very simple way how this should work. Um, so here, let's say your chart.yml has this right name subchart so my subchart um it should uh, it, so i'm gonna the condition to have this dependency is uh the value subchart dot enabled being true right and the, the bug is when this is false the home controller is still applying the crd so by uh calling this um this function here right here uh this what this function does is exactly to evaluate the the value uh at like an subchart dot enabled right and and if it's true it keeps the dependency and if it's false it removes from this chart object in memory here the first one passed to the function it's exactly what the function does but it's the first thing that the function does and i test this it's like working exactly as it as it should. Sole in the past uh, brought up that we should test for our item potency here. And yes, it's item potent, like you can call this function many times and it the, the right dependencies that have to be inside this object in the end will be there correctly, no worries. And the second thing that this function does is the problem that I want to bring up. The second thing this function does is to bring the values from the subchart into the values of the main chart 
according to this feature called import values from Helm. So let's look at the docs here. It's this import values here. Um, so there's two ways to, to import values from a child chart to a parent chart. And one works fine, the other one looks bugged. So the first one is like, you have this um, export uh, special uh, field here in the, in the child values.yaml. You put whatever you want there. And uh, in the parent chart.yaml file, you specify import values, uh, just passing the, the path here, like, and it's relative to this import exports key here so uh the result as the docs say of like of the parents value should be like this so helm will put uh this what's inside data in the top level of the parents values like this my test works exactly like this so um Um, asserting here this so so like I I I just made made the same setup of the docs here so uh the subchart has this exports field with data my integer one two three and then um I expect it to end up uh like this and it works this part works uh in my test here. But I'm also with the debugger open exactly in the part the other the other um, kind of importing that that Helm supports here, which is this uh, other format here. So in this other format, instead of passing a string here for this list of import values, you pass this object with what's the path inside the child and where do we want to place it in the parent. So. Uh, let's say you have, you want like, um, in the child here, you have, uh, a default dot data like this, it has a bunch of stuff inside. Um, and you want it to end up in, in the path, my imports of the parent like this, right? So the result that the documentation claims is this right like this um my int 999 and my bull true will uh override the zero and this false here and result and, and this will be the end result so i just followed in the debug the, the debugger in vs code and it's not replacing like it's um like it's it's zero here so in my in my test, I have so I have this the same thing, subchart, uh, sorry. Default, data, my int. Four five six, and it ends up like this with zero. And uh, I found exactly where this happens. Um, so, here. I have, uh, sorry. Uh, so my int zero, right? Source is uh, my int four, five, six. And if we go through this code here, we'll see that it ends up in this condition. So here, key is my int, the destination, zero, the value, zero, okay, is true. So it doesn't end end up here, like, right? Because if it's not, it's not, not okay. So, and there's also not a table. It's not a map, right? It's an integer. That's why it doesn't end up here as well. And um, it ends up uh, checking this, this condition here. Uh, and it's also false. So, it also doesn't end on the spring. So basically, um, 
I don't know if this is a bug right here in this code in my screen, or if this is a bug in the docs. I suppose it's a bug in the code, right? Because, um, because I guess, it should behave. It it should yeah, behave like, like the doc says. Yeah, like the what's docs above. Sound reasonable to me, right? It sounds like what we really want here. So, yeah, so in my test, it's... in my test, basically what I did was I pushed the commit with zero here. I, I was expecting four, five, six, but and it turns fails. out it's, it, yeah. So I didn't even, so why am I even working on this? I'm working on this because I want to test the idempotence of this function. So I'm just in the first execution of the function. I didn't even reach the second one. So I, I'm not even testing idempot idempotence here. <laughs> in the first execution, it already yields this wrong result. So that's how I left my, I pushed this commit a few minutes ago with this test for a test for imported values here. Yeah, so there there is a lot of history to this uh, in, in the Helm project. They changed the behavior a couple of times. Um, so the behavior was, oh, the sub chart will override the parent chart default values then they changed their mind and made the parent override the child then in the last version they undo the previous uh, change my guess is that they un they un undo the change only for one use case of specifying the child imports. And now we have two different behaviors, which at some point they were both valid because, yeah, uh, it is what it is. And is this recent or is it L3 and two difference? No, no, no. This is recent. very recent. It's like this year uh, this happened. And we we got very affected. I had to. We had to. I don't know if you remember. I create. We released Flux two point three or two point two or something like that. Then we we also released the release candidate for Helm and tell people, hey, if you really want to use the latest version of Helm, use this release candidate. We can include it because it completely changes the behavior of the old version, where values are not are overridden from the child. Right, and I don't know, Kingdom or someone said like, let's not hurry and 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 remove the code and undo anything. Let's see what what they decide, and they decide to undo it, and then we uh, move, we jump the version, and we got to whatever it was before. But now it turns out that uh, depending on how you you specify to import the the values from the child by a path or using export, it behaves differently. Exactly, yeah. Like I... with export, it uses the value in the child and without exports, it uses the value in the in the parent. Yeah. So it may well be that this is already an issue that someone found and reported in help. You have to dig into the Helm issues and see if this is reported by someone. If it's not, then you should create an issue and explain, hey, these are the docs. This is what we observed in our Flux tests. We are not going to do anything in Flux about this. So we shouldn't change anything in your, you'll commit the test with zero because this is the behavior of the Helm SDK. No. Mm -hmm. But we should either report the issue or if we, you find an, an issue, you can say there in a comment, yes, we've replicated this in the flux test. There is really a difference between importing with exporting the child or importing by a path, right? But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I, I my cool. feeling tells me that we it ended up in this situation because of the, of all the changes that happened to 
the way of merging. Got it. Cool. I mean, So it's in that easy. case, uh, sorry, go ahead. So I say we we add the test that doesn't fail that mimics the what Helm does. You can maybe put a comment there in the test. Hey, this test. looks contradictional, but is not because this is how Helm behaves. And if you find the issue, uh, comment on it, link it to our pull request or to the test if you want. Um, but anyway, I don't think we should delay fixing the CR debug, which the CR debug is our fault. Like Helm does it correctly. It was us that took, took on us to, you know, manage CRDs, not only at install, but also at upgrade. And because we we made that decision, we didn't realize that we need to call, we need to copy that function call uh, in, in the CRD before we apply the CRDs, right? That Cool. our, our mistake was that we, we use the chart with, without passing the filters. We got all the CRDs from all the subcharts, even if those subcharts are not enabled and we apply them. And a lot of people complain about this. And Totally I think fair. that the, it, it's, it's fair because if you have this huge umbrella chart that contains, I don't know, 20 controllers and you only want two, you end up with 20 CRDs from all the controllers. And, you know, CRDs can be very heavy on ETCD and so on. Uh, also, Helm uninstall never removes CRDs, so you are stuck with them forever. <laughs> uh, that's another big issue. But anyway, uh, it's it's how Helm is designed. So yeah, thank you very much for uh, looking and fixing this CRD bug. It's it's really our bug, and we should definitely include it in two point five. Cool. And I guess like, well, I don't see like, so if anybody wants me to cover any other um, test case like uh, there, please comment because I mean, I didn't really know how to test how well, like how I could test this item potent of this function besides, you know, just um, putting the, the like exercising all that that function does with uh the dependency being enabled or not and the import values so i put everything i could there if there's anything else you guys think we should cover for this item post item potence test please do it uh sunny also request your review i'll wait for your review there as well okay mm -hmm. thanks yeah so why we were are so concerned about item potency is due to our scars <laughs> working with Helm. We, there are some issues that, that either um, encountered while, for example, there is this Helm storage implementation, right? And the Helm storage can be a secret. You can change it to a config map. You can set it to, I don't know, a Postgres or MySQL database. But when you do testing, they have a storage implementation, which is pure in memory, right? It shouldn't be, in order to run the end-to-end -end test, you shouldn't have a working Kubernetes cluster to store it there. And turned out if you use the in-memory storage, is not thread safe. And if you call the storage multiple times, it messes up the uh, object in, in storage. Right, so the problem there, if you would call the function, it will, I know, I, I forgot to not override the memory, it will add to the storage, something like that. And based on those experiences, I said, okay, if we are calling this function, Helm calls it only once, now we are calling it twice. What if the chart in memory object uh, gets corrupted, right? But if you are saying right. you now we have a test where we call the function twice and the installation goes okay, the upgrade happens okay, then we are not risking anything by calling the function twice to not corrupt the chart uh, or or anything like that. That that was our 
here. Oh yeah, by the way, my test is only for install. So should I like just copy it for yes, upgrade? Yes. Like yes, the entire test? It's a large one. Yeah. So I know. Cool. but upgrade cool. has total different tasks. Uh so let's let's call it also for upgrade so we don't risk some modification cool. in the chat that only happens at upgrade. Upgrade is way more complex than install, right? So Got it. who knows? <laughs> Better to cool, be cool. safe we'll than do. sorry. No. Cool. Thank you. We'll do. Should we go for other topics or end them? <laughs> what other topics you have in mind? Uh, Many. <laughs> Many. Some are short, some are short, some are so I think cash discussion can be next week. Uh, I think we should discuss one, at least one of these because it's been weeks. Uh, Flux CLI, uh, quick config context name space issue. Do you remember? It's yeah. the first point in the meeting doc. Did we respect the quick config, quick config context name space or not? What do we do? Is it such a big deal or it's nothing? I think we should respect it. I think plugs should behave like kubectl. The only difference is that kubectl defaults to the default namespace, while the flux CLI defaults to the flux system namespace because that's its default. And I get it, it can be confusing, but what that pull request tries to do, I, I can't, can't understand why they need that. Why don't they just set the default context in kubeconfig? What's, what's the reason for it? Like how, how, it, how they work with kubectl? Wait, you're saying the, the, the pull request that is adding the environment variable or initially yeah. when it was introduced? The new pull request, right? They just wanted a way to achieve this. They didn't care how to achieve it. They just wanted some way to do it. They are ready to close this pull request. Okay, even I feel we should just respect it and it's not a big deal. By default, kubectl doesn't have that set. And when it's not set, we should go for a flux system. If it's set, we respect it. It's kind of yes. a power user configuration. So we should respect it. <laughs> so you anyway. are saying that, so the default namespace is not set as default in kubeconfig Cube when you create a kubeconfig, right? Mm -hmm. You need to say kubectl set context namespace default and only then it gets default. If it's not there, kubeconfig has some logic inside its source code oh, there is no namespace, I'm doing default. Flux has the same logic in its source code. If it's not there, go to Flux system. So I think that's, that's the right behavior. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any other opinion? I do support the same, respecting it. Can I don't it, object. I don't object. I think it's a bug and we should fix it. Um, it it's also a behavior change, but um, it's not one you can't work around. If As long as you can still set the variable so that flux system is the namespace that overrides the cube context, I, th I think that's good. It should go in the release notes so no one's confused that this is a behavior change. But I agree, it's a bug. Okay, I'm just writing the other post in the pull request and the issue. Yeah, so we really need to document this in the pull request and copy what we have in the pull request that fixes this in the change log uh, of Flux 2.5. Because definitely some people that rely on the old behavior will be upset. A few small questions. 
which will take less than a minute <laughs> if we no. don't discuss further. <laughs> uh, LRU cache in our cache implementation, as per last week's discussion, we will not we will not need the cache in image structure. So the only cache use case we are left with is expiring cache. There is no use case for please listen to use cache. Should we just remove the implementation from the package? Because Flux doesn't have a use case for it. Oh, we do. That's right. for the uh, Helm index files. Oh, is it LRU? No, it has time based expiration. We said TDA. Yeah, and that's wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> okay. Because it's not a token, man. It has no, you, there is no expiration on an index file. Oh, it's wait, a database. Okay. There, okay, okay. It's, uh, okay. Okay, didn't realize. Um, index. Okay. So a cache okay. with an expiration makes sense when the value there is by default ephemeral and expires, right? It's it's the ideal for auth to tokens, but for something which is a database, which is either uh, a huge index YAML, which has all the versions, or it's, I don't know, what reflector controller does, and it's a, just a list of, of of strings. That data you will never expire; it will always be valid, right? So we it shouldn't be something that expires. It it should be based on how much memory is it available. Do you want to allocate to cache index files, right? So instead of erroring out, right, and and set uh, like like we do today. People need to figure out, oh, I'm using 10 Helm repositories, so I need to change also this flag to make room for them in memory. That's kind of silly, <laughs> right? You should say, my buffer is 10. If you have 100 uh, Helm uh, repositories, the last one is those that have, let's say, a shorter interval and you check them every hour. You want to cache those in there. And those that have an interval with 10 hours, why would you keep them in memory and use, you know, uh, triple the memory for those that have a fast uh, reconciliation time? It's not what we want as an optimization. What we want as an optimization because index files are so uh CPU intensive uh you you need to parse it a lot is keep those that are uh changing fast or that are updated fast those should be cached right so I think it's it's so it's the perfect I, type of caching right I just I thought the cache we have in source controller is LRU I thought just check it it is expired cache so yes. if we change this Consequence is that we have to remove a flag. There is a flag in the post controller where we are setting this cache TPM. Yeah, yeah. we can, can. We can. No, no, we can uh, deprecate. I I think we can actually deprecate all those flags and only keep the one that uh, sets the buffer size. Purge oh, purge is not relevant. Ah, just the size. Yeah, you okay. just need the size. <laughs> Right, and it simplifies the way you configure it. It simplifies the way you use this thing going forward. Right. Okay, I'll update the cache discussion issue to highlight this thing. <laughs> but it makes uh, sense to you, right? What I'm mm -hmm. saying. I'll think more about it about the size, okay. memory, and if we get the memory, is it a thing? <laughs> Good thing. Should I go for another question? <laughs> or um... Ogi, can you stay a little <laughs> more longer because uh, Sunny wants to discuss other things? Are you in a no, hurry? that's fine. I waited that long. I might as well okay. wait a few okay. minutes longer. Okay, okay. thank two, you. Two quick questions. We have a fork of CLI utils. I noticed that CLI utils upstream is updating, not that the latest current is 
the one that's released recently, but they have updated things. Should we rebase? And then add our changes on top of that. Because I see they are making changes to some interfaces as well, client user interfaces, and you may be missing all those things. CLI with tails, that's what we're talking about. We have a yeah, so, yeah, so I, I tried this and I, I failed and I got mad and I didn't retry it again, but uh, try releasing. No, try deleting everything and only keeping case status. <laughs> there is so much code in there that's not used in kubectl, not used in Kubernetes itself. He's using used in kept or whatever other projects. And for some reason, they keep adding a bunch of stuff to CLI deals. We shouldn't depend or rely on any of that code. We should trim down the library to case status and its dependencies to other packages. And that's the problem. Like, I I just I I kept deleting things and at some point I deleted more than supposed to delete and then putting them back didn't felt right, but I think we should trim it down to what we use, which is case status. Identify what other things in all the CLI util uh, are required for case status, and there are one or two types which are required. Keep only those in our fork. And then rebase only changes for case status or I don't know, copy them or something once every six months or once per year in our library if we feel like we, we need to. Um, but now we have like a lot of code there that's, and, and oh, I remember what was the problem. So the problem is that they there are some tests which use a bunch of other packages in case status, even if it's not related to case status. They apply things, they create inventories, they do all testing. stuff for testing, right? So uh, I managed to delete everything, only case status and uh, the um, uh, the one or two types that it needs. So there is. It can be really, really thin, but then you can't test anything anymore because the case status tests are using all the libraries, but they shouldn't. Like we, we have in SSA all the tests and it's it, it, they can be uh, wrote in, in such a way that only uses the um, control runtime client. You don't need all those, all, all the other stuff that's in there. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a lot of work to rewrite those tests without depending on on all that stuff. But yeah, I, I agree. We should we should at least check and understand from all the things that they've merged what changes are to case status. See if they benefit us and and I don't know, copy paste rebase them do something uh, if if it's worth I. I think I last checked two months ago, uh, the pull request and nothing touched case status. It touched a lot of other things like the inventory and uh, deletion, but we don't use any of that. I mean, ideally we should actually get rid of, of CLI things and have case status as a, a sub package of SSA. Okay. Um, I'm wondering how difficult is it to just rebase and add our changes when needed. It's just the Google has dependency of things, right? Is there any other change? So they depend on customize. So CLI utils were because they needed in other parts. It imports customize and it also imports kubectl and kubectl imports customize. That's why I forked mm -hmm. it. So it's a cyclic dependency. Oh. Right. 
and, and it blocked us from releasing Plux 2.2 for three months. And at some point I said, okay, this is, we can't just wait forever for a project which is not directly used in Kubernetes anywhere. It's used in other projects. And we depend on people going in there and updating it when they have the time and they do it a couple of months after a Kubernetes release. So that's why I work it so I can, we can keep in control, in sync all these dependencies because it's this cyclic, cyclic dependency there. Okay. So nothing okay. to do for now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll move to other questions for next week. Probably. Probably. I found the exact issue in the Helm repo. I told you someone definitely <laughs> uh, caught it. <laughs> Good. I am the third. I also commented there to maybe give Yeah, you see, first of all, so that's in, in the summer, uh, this uh, flip changed. Yeah. Yeah. It's the exact opposite of the docs. <laughs> yeah, probably it will take one year to fix this. So don't don't worry about it. Just do the test as it. Yeah, I added a comment. Yeah, I added a comment linking to this issue in the test. Cool. Cool. Okay. We can end okay. the recording and talk about uh, Augie's uh, proposal.